Alp Arslan, honorific in Turkic meaning heroic or great lion, in Persian, Allah Arslan, Arabic epithet, Diya ad Dunya wa ad Dinadud ad Dala Abu Shuja. Muhammad Alp Arslan ibn Davud Persian, Diya Elidnya wi Ayildin he Dayild Ultabu Shija Muhammad Allah Arslan ibn Dawud, January 20, 1029, November 24, 1072. Real name Muhammad bin Davud Shagri, was the second sultan of the Seljuk Empire and great grandson of Seljuk, the eponymous founder of the dynasty. He greatly expanded the Seljuk territory and consolidated his power, defeating rivals to south and northwest and his victory over the Byzantines at the Battle of Manzikert, in 1071, ushered in the Turkoman settlement of Anatolia. For his military prowess and fighting skills he obtained the name Alp Arslan, which means heroic lion in Turkish. Alp Arslan was the son of Shagri and nephew of Tufrul, the founding sultans of the Seljuk Empire. His grandfather was Mikhail, who in turn was the son of the warlord Seljuk. He was the father of numerous children, including Malik Shah and Tutushai. It is unclear who the mother or mothers of his children were. He was known to have been married at least twice. His wives included the widow of his uncle Tufrul, a Karakhanid princess known as Aka Katun, and the daughter or niece of Bagrat IV of Georgia. One of Seljuk's other sons was the Turkic chieftain Arslan Israel, whose son, Kutalmish, contested his nephew's succession to the Sultanate. Alp Arslan's younger brothers Suleiman ibn Shagri and Kavert were his rivals. Khalij Arslan, the son and successor of Suleiman ibn Kutalmish, was a major opponent of the Franks during the First Crusade and the Crusade of 1101. Coin minted in the name of Alp Arslan with the title Shah. A miniature depicting Alp Arslan, located in Topkap Palace Museum. Alp Arslan accompanied his uncle Tufrul on campaigns in the south against the Fatimids while his father Shagri remained in Khorasan. Upon Alp Arslan's return to Khorasan, he began his work in administration at his father's suggestion. While there, his father introduced him to Nizam al-Mulk, one of the most eminent statesmen in early Muslim history and Alp Arslan's future vizier. After the death of his father, Alp Arslan succeeded him as governor of Khorasan in 1059. His uncle Tufrul died in 1063 and had designated his successor as Suleiman, Arslan's infant brother. Arslan and his uncle Kutalmish both contested this succession which was resolved at the Battle of Damgan in 1063. Arslan defeated Kutalmish for the throne and succeeded on April 27, 1064 as Sultan of the Seljuk Empire, thus becoming sole monarch of Persia from the river Oxus to the Tigris. In consolidating his empire and subduing contending factions, Arslan was ably assisted by Nizam al-Mulk, and the two are credited with helping to stabilize the empire after the death of Tufrul. With peace and security established in his dominions, Arslan convoked an assembly of the states and in 1066, he declared his son Malik Shah his heir and successor. With the hope of capturing Caesarea Mazaka, the capital of Cappadocia, he placed himself at the head of the Turkoman cavalry, crossed the Euphrates, and entered and invaded the city. Along with Nizam al-Mulk, he then marched into Armenia and Georgia, which he conquered in 1064. After a siege of 25 days, the Seljuks captured Ani, the capital city of Armenia. An account of the sack and massacres in Ani is given by the historian Sibdiv and Jauzi, who quotes an eyewitness saying, putting the Persian sword to work, they spared no one. One could see there the grief and calamity of every age of humankind. For children were ravished from the embraces of their mothers and mercilessly hurled against rocks, while the mothers drenched them with tears and blood. The city became filled from one end to the other with bodies of the slain and, the bodies of the slain, became a road. The army entered the city, massacred its inhabitants, pillaged and burned it, leaving it in ruins and taking prisoner all those who remained alive, the dead bodies were so many that they blocked the streets, one could not go anywhere without stepping over them. And the number of prisoners was not less than 50,000 souls. I was determined to enter city and see the destruction with my own eyes. I tried to find a street in which I would not have to walk over the corpses, but that was impossible. En route to fight the Fatimids in Syria in 1068, Alp Arslan invaded the Byzantine Empire. The Emperor Romanos IV Diogenes, assuming command in person, met the invaders in Cilicia. In three arduous campaigns, the Turks were defeated in detail and driven across the Euphrates in 1070. The first two campaigns were conducted by the emperor himself, while the third was directed by Manuel Komnenos, great-uncle of Emperor Manuel Komnenos. During this time, Arslan gained the allegiance of Rashid al-Dala Mahmud, the Murdasid emir of Aleppo. 
In 1071 Romanos again took the field and advanced into Armenia with possibly 30,000 men, including a contingent of Cuman Turks as well as contingents of Franks and Normans, under Urzel de Bayul. Alp Arslan, who had moved his troops south to fight the Fatimids, quickly reversed to meet the Byzantines. At Manzikert, on the Murat River, north of Lake Van, the two forces waged the Battle of Manzikert. The Cuman mercenaries among the Byzantine forces immediately defected to the Turkic side. Seeing this, the western mercenaries rode off and took no part in the battle. To be exact, Romanos was betrayed by General Andronikos Daukas, son of the Caesar, who pronounced him dead and rode off with a large part of the Byzantine forces at a critical moment. The Byzantines were totally routed. Byzantine territory, Byzantine campaigns and Seljuk campaigns Emperor Romanos IV was himself taken prisoner and conducted into the presence of Alp Arslan. After a ritual humiliation, Arslan treated him with generosity. After peace terms were agreed to, Arslan dismissed the emperor, loaded with presents and respectfully attended by a military guard. The following conversation is said to have taken place after Romanos was brought as a prisoner before the Sultan, Alp Arslan humiliating Emperor Romanos IV after the Battle of Manzikert. From a 15th century illustrated French translation of Boccaccio's De Cassibus Virorum Illustrium. Alp Arslan, what would you do if I was brought before you as a prisoner? Romanos, perhaps I'd kill you, or exhibit you in the streets of Constantinople. Alp Arslan, my punishment is far heavier. I forgive you. And set you free. Alp Arslan's victories changed the balance in Near Asia completely in favor of the Saluk Turks and Sunni Muslims. While the Byzantine Empire was to continue for nearly four more centuries, the victory at Manzikert signaled the beginning of Turkmen ascendancy in Anatolia. The victory at Manzikert became so popular among the Turks that later every noble family in Anatolia claimed to have had an ancestor who had fought on that day. Most historians, including Edward Gibbon, date the defeat at Manzikert as the beginning of the end of the Eastern Roman Empire. Alp Arslan's strength lay in the military realm. Domestic affairs were handled by his able vizier, Nizam al-Mulk, the founder of the administrative organization that characterized and strengthened the Sultanate during the reigns of Alp Arslan and his son, Malik Shah. Military fiefs, governed by Saluk princes, were established to provide support for the soldiery and to accommodate the nomadic Turks to the established Anatolian agricultural scene. This type of military fiefdom enabled the nomadic Turks to draw on the resources of the sedentary Persians, Turks, and other established cultures within the Saluk realm. And allowed Alp Arslan to field a huge standing army without depending on tribute from conquest to pay his soldiers. He not only had enough food from his subjects to maintain his military, but the taxes collected from traders and merchants added to his coffer sufficiently to fund his continuous wars. According to the poet Saadi Shirazi, Khazal Aslan possessed a fort, which raised its head to the height of Alwand. Secure from all were those within its walls, for its roads were a labyrinth, like the curls of a bride. From a learned traveller Khazal once inquired, Didst thou ever, in thy wanderings, see a fort as strong as this? Splendid it is, was the reply, but methinks not it confers much strength. Before thee, did not other kings possess it for a while? Then pass away? After thee, will not other kings assume control, and eat the fruits of the tree of thy hope? In the estimation of the wise, the world is a false gem that passes each moment from one hand to another. Suleiman ibn Talmish was the son of the contender for Arslan's throne. He was appointed governor of the northwestern provinces and assigned to completing the invasion of Anatolia. An explanation for this choice can only be conjectured from Ibn Alathir's account of the battle between Alperslan and Kutalmish, in which he writes that Alperslan wept for the latter's death and greatly mourned the loss of his kinsmen. After Manzikert, the dominion of Alp Arslan extended over much of Western Asia. He soon prepared to march for the conquest of Turkestan, the original seat of his ancestors. With a powerful army he advanced to the banks of the Oxus. Before he could pass the river with safety, however, it was necessary to subdue certain fortresses, one of which was for several days vigorously defended by the Kurdish rebel, Yusuf al karami or Yusuf al harani Perhaps overeager to press on against his Karakhanid enemy, Alp Arslan gained the governor's submission by promising the rebel perpetual ownership of his lands. When Yusuf al harani was brought before him, the sultan ordered that he be shot, but before the archers could raise their bows Yusuf seized a knife and threw himself at Alp Arslan, striking three blows before being slain. Four days later on November 24, 1072 Alp Arslan died and was buried at Merv, having designated his 18-year-old son Malik Shah as his successor. One of his wives was Safariya Khatun. 
She had a daughter, Sifri Katun, who in 1071-72, married Abbasid Caliph al-Muqtadi. Safariya died in Isfahan in 1073-4. Another of his wives was Aga Katun. She had been formerly the wife of Sultan Tufrul. Alp Arslan married her after Tufrul's death in 1063. Another of his wives was Shah Katun. She was the daughter of Qadir Khan Yusuf, and had been formerly married to Ghatsnabad Masud. Another of his wives was the daughter of the Georgian King Bagrat. They married in 1067-68. He divorced her soon after, and married her to Fadlan. His sons were Malik Shahai, Tutushai, Tekish, and Arslan Argan. One of his daughters, married the son of Kurd Shirkab, son of Bard in 1068. Another daughter, Zulika Katun, was married to Muslim, son of Quraysh in 1086-7. Another daughter, Aisha Katun married Shams al Nasser, son of Ibrahim Kontamsh. Statue of Alp Arslan Alp Arslan's conquest of Anatolia from the Byzantines is also seen as one of the pivotal precursors to the launch of the Crusades. From 2002 to July 2008 under Turkmen calendar reform, the month of August was named after Alp Arslan. The second training motorized rifle division of the Turkmen ground forces is named in his honor. Thanks for watching.